Hello, my name is Damia Mesa Waters, and I'm here today to talk about a movie we had to watch called Wilmington 10, USA 10,000. This is a documentary made in the year 1979 by an Ethiopian filmmaker. I think his name is pronounced Haile Garima, and it is meant to take a look at the case of Wilmington 10, as the title reads, who were a group of 10 people. It was nine African-American black men, one white woman who had been wrongly, wrongfully convicted of arson and conspiracy in 1971. I understood the title of the film very late. It says Wilmington 10, USA 10,000. I realized that, okay, Wilmington 10 obviously has to do with the people that were convicted, but USA 10,000 has to do with, like, this just happening in general to black people with, like, the injustice, discrimination, that killings, like, are, like being arrested, like, every single day. We have to keep going through this, like, over and over. Also, by the way, I apologize for how much I say like in this recording. I'm actually recording this after I recorded everything else, so I apologize because it happens a lot. Now, this documentary, Wilmington 10, it charts the racism of the criminal justice system and the resilience of generations of black communities still struggling against these systems because, like, it's been going on for forever. I wanted to start off with this quote that that I got from an interview with Haile Garima from Real Black when he says, when you don't tell your story, you are a confused human being forever. All human beings make stories to have a sense of continuity as human beings. And by continuity, he means progression and unbroken consistency. Now, I'm assuming a majority of his films are like this, where he's telling stories that have to do with like our history from the past. Just like with his other film, Sankofa, I know this video isn't about Sankofa, it's supposed to be about Wilmington 10, but I just want to get on with this for a moment. Because Sankofa is about a model who's been disconnected from her African roots, and she doesn't know the history of where she's having a photo shoot, and she gets transported to her past in slavery. And the word Sankofa itself is a Ghanaian, a con word meaning to go back and gain wisdom, power, and hope. Meaning in order to make a better future for ourselves, we must learn from the past, acknowledging and knowing our history, which is important and makes helps us make a better future for ourselves. You know, like learning from the past again. And the main thing about Wilmington 10 is like, it's not really telling a story as much as it's kind of like bringing up something from the past, but I mean, like it is telling a story because like he's trying to bring it across again for those who may not know, try to make a better future for ourselves with this because when usually when you hear about black history, you hear about the same people, Martin Luther King Jr., Harry Tubman, Malcolm X, but Wilmington 10 is probably something that like not a lot of people know about. To provide some backstory on the Wilmington 10, in the 60s and 70s, black residents of Wilmington, North Carolina were not satisfied with the lack of progress from the civil rights movement. And there were struggles of poverty, opportunity, the MLK assassinations, and this violent tension was caused throughout the city. Now they closed the Williston Industrial High School which is just one of the black schools that they shut down. And it laid off the black staff and students who were transferred to white schools or majority white schools. And the Ku, the Ku Klux Klan and other white supremacists patrolled the streets. The students boycotted the schools in 1971. And in February, the United Church of Christ sent Ben Chavez, who was one of the convicted 10, from the Commission for Racial Justice to work with these high school students, talk about black history and organized the boycott at Gregory Congregational Church. But in February of the same year, a white grocery store was firebombed and 10 victims, one including Chavez, were convicted of arson and conspiracy because they say that the, sh the shootings or the firebombs were shot at that church that they were at while they were boycotting the schools and protesting. Now, the 10 convicted people are Ben Chavez, Connie Tindall, Marvin Chili Patrick, Wayne Moore, Reginald Epps, Jerry Jacobs, James Bunn McCoy, Willie Earl Vereen, William Joe Wright, and Ann Shepard. Now, Ben Chavis and Ann Shepard were the only adults and the rest were the high school students. But Ann Shepard was the only one who happened to be white, but she also received much less years convicted, wait, hold on, years sentence rather. The rest of them got up to more than two decades, around 29 to 34. Hopefully I'm not explaining all that right. I feel like I'm all over the place. Now, I want to speak on the movies or documentaries, pros and cons. So the main thing is that, like, again, the, this event is one that's, like, not really talked about that much in black history when it comes to, like, us not having justice. 
the discrimination and honestly i can't even say anything about the justice system because there is no justice even somebody in the documentary pointed that out another pro i had is that there was like i like the acknowledgement of steve biko who was a, Af a south african anti-apartheid activist who pioneered the philosophy philosophy i cannot talk hold on who pioneered the philosophy of the black conscious movement and the charlotte three who are all civil rights activists like the wilmington 10. so this isn't just about african americans like people of african descent from like other places like this stuff is happening to them all the time who are going through discrimination and are trying to get their voices heard and protest asada shakur was another political prisoner who spoke within the documentary i'm sorry i forgot to mention her but this is the exact same type of stuff that happened to her and she read from a poem i don't know if it was hers because every single time i try to look up some of the keywords from my notes i'm not getting a lot of results or at least relevant results the main quote that i have written right here says after the lock-ins outs and ups like lock-ins lockouts lock-ups what will come next i don't have a lot of information about like if it's either her poem if it's somebody else's again these are names that don't even come up as much in black history as once again like martin luther king jr and malcolm x and harriet tubman people like that and although again they they are very significant but it's like there's so many other people that could be mentioned now i tend to be kind of judgmental not even kind of judgmental very judgmental and critical when it comes to a lot of stuff that's related to like tv shows and movies and other things like that because especially like in this sense because i've never done a review before even though i talk about stuff all the time one of the main cons i wanted to point out was that garima didn't give that much information on the people who were convicted that much especially not the white woman who was um and shepherd they didn't give a lot of information about her like how they were connected or if she was she was probably connected to somebody in the church maybe possibly maybe she was just a part of like the boycotts and protests like she wanted to like have her like she wanted to be a part of like the protesting too because she she was trying to fight against discrimination like the rest of them but they didn't they really didn't give a lot of information about like any of them another issue with this film is that some of the material was kind of all over the place well not really all over the place but this is like really minor before i even get into that the soundtrack not really, yeah some of the songs that were playing in the documentary was kind of throwing me off because of the way that the song sounded like i don't know if they were like slave songs or something but i pretty sure there were prison songs something equivalent but it was kind of throwing me off especially since like after the main intro they started filming above the cape fear river and they were talking about a massacre of blacks being killed and lynched by in and by this river which scared me because i'm thinking like wait a minute the, the people who were convicted were they killed and lynched by the cape fear river like they were scared like they were scaring me for some reason i'm like did they even tell a lot about what happened to them after their sentence i apologize if i'm all over the place i really don't even know how to explain what i think about this but just in general it's already painful that we're disrespect that we're like disrespected constantly we've always been treated like this being killed off constantly like every single day there's no justice like anywhere in the world not even just the united states and even people in the african continent like in some cities are forbidden from living normal lives I don't want to keep seeing us suffer and like I've realized that this is a part of our history that we just and like it's still significant to this day but like a lot especially with the stuff that we have to watch in school is always something negative like I want to see something positive about our history I want to like be disturbed and like I don't know and at some point that they're like at that point where they're talking about a massacre like it was also like kind of off topic because i don't know what this had to do with anything there was like a random white guy that came out of nowhere. i mean like they were talking about general injustices but like there was some white guy saying something about how somebody else said that it can't be called rape if it applies to a black woman i'm like where is this going i don't know the pacing was really slow that that's another kind of like, the pacing was really slow not everything has to be like super duper fast and in your face but i'm used to like things being not cutting every five seconds because i also hate when documentaries do that too the women that were being interviewed didn't have their or just anybody that was in the interviews didn't have their name pop up right away and i didn't know i'm like are these the mothers of some of the convicted students or anything like that but 
it didn't say who anybody was until the very end, and then I didn't even get a chance to write that down. Like, some didn't have their names pop up at all. They only appeared for, like, two seconds. The camera angles were kind of strange because they recorded from, like, all the way afar. Or maybe they were too close to the screen sometimes. I don't know if it was intended for emphasis or not. Plus, in general, I think you kind of already got the point from what I said, but it also felt, like, really disorganized. Like, kind of all over the place because of the editing. And I'm used to documentaries, like, not trying to say, like, they have to, like, point out, like, when this is happening, when this is happening. But I'm used to documentaries, like, kind of having a more organized thing. Like, they have, like, certain categories of, like, this is what's going to be covered here. This is what's going to be covered there. I'm making it sound like I didn't pay attention, but I did. I just, I don't even know how to explain myself. I don't want to seem like I'm down talking on Haile Garima because I'm sure, like, his movies and documentaries deliver these, like, great messages and I don't want to make it seem like this was like really disorganized or it was a mess or anything. I don't want to talk about him like that. I'm not trying to say that, but this is kind of how I view it.